Hey guys, Bill Nichols here, Ben Nichols TV. I'm with Trent from Unique. We're going to talk about the Intel RealSense of the Typhoon H and their new quad that they came out, the Breeze 4K. So Trent, why don't you tell us about the Breeze 4K, what it is, kind of what the goal with Unique is for it. So with the Breeze, the fundamental idea is that it's a flying camera, meaning this is not a unit that you're going to be flying around getting aerial video of beauty. This is something that's designed with you in mind. This is something that is easy, easy to put in your backpack and it's easy to deploy and easy to fly to take photos of yourself to share. Um, so with Breeze, we're really trying to enter into the consumer space and really make something that is incredibly easy to fly. So what would you say that it compares against to the market right now? Like if somebody's looking at another type of a smaller quadcopter, because I know there's a lot that have kind of a fixed camera. What is this, What if they're looking at something else, what are they looking at that they should really be looking at the Breeze? What are the advantages with the Breeze? So the advantage with the Breeze is the app that is paired with the Breeze. And the fundamental difference of how Breeze flies is in the app. So instead of actually flying the drone, you simply tell it, I want to go higher and I want to go farther and you know, vice versa. Um, so you actually don't need to, 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 to fly. You don't need the experience on two sticks to be able to position the drone to get the image of yourself that you want. And how are you doing stabilization with the camera? Is there a stabilization built in or? Yeah, so we, we worked really closely um, with, the, with the camera manufacturer um, and we have a stabilization algorithm um, that uses the 4K chip and will stabilize down to 1080, 720. Um, we also have the option to have to record in 4K, uh, but the 4K is unstabilized. So we are recommending that you do fly and use 4K uh, indoors or in non-windy conditions. So for the stabilization, you're taking basically a cropped piece of the sensor. You're looking at edge detection, maybe contrast detection, something else, then stabilizing electronically in there? Correct, yes. It's an electronic image stabilization. What do you look at for flight time on the Breeze? And then does it have internal memory um, or does it take a separate memory card? What's the, then what is the um, specs on the stills for it? Yeah, okay, so flight time, you get up to 12 minutes. Um, again, it's a flying camera. You, you aren't necessarily gonna be flying the whole battery. Sure. Um, the image quality, it's 13 megapixels, um, which just look so buttery, so good. Breeze has an internal memory um, and, and why it does is most of the interactions with Breeze will be with your cell phone. Um, so you can download images and videos, even 4K videos, to your cell phone um, effortless, effortlessly. Then charge time on it? Charge time's about 30 to 45 minutes, uh, and the packs are very small. Right. So when I go out and fly, I'm usually they're, uh, 11, 11.50, right. um, and, and so I usually go out with 5 or, or 10. Um, there is an included carrying case with this that yep. you're able to just throw it into your ba uh, an existing backpack. Um, and uh, <laughs> so the breeze comes with a with a carrying case in the box, uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to hold your breeze, prop guards, and two batteries, one in the drone and one on the side of the drone, um, which will will fit into any normal backpack. So you're the product manager for Breeze. Um, how was the Breeze concept, you know, created? Like, where did the where did the idea for Breeze come out of? Because you have, you know, relatively in the realm of quadcopters, low cost, you know, technology with the Q500, up to you know mid range cost with the Typhoon H now. So where did the Breeze come in? It's actually a very specific time. Um, in, in in 2013, I flew a drone behind myself uh, and this girl that I was out uh, adventuring with. Um, and I took a photo of us from behind. It almost looked like it was a candid image where we didn't even know the drone was there. And it really showed us in the environment that we were in. Um, and that was when it triggered in my mind that while drones are amazing for aerial photography and, and filming other locations, they're amazing tools to be recording our own experiences. And um, since that day, I, I started drawing concepts and, and, and you know, doing app, you know, right. thinking about the app. And so um, it's been a long time coming and, and I'm glad that, uh, you know, working with Unique and, and it's, it's been amazing uh, R&D process to, to bring the breeze to life. So it sounds like that kind of life experience, um, the experience piece is really where the, the safe, the social comes from. So um, 
what are the social components built into Breeze? Is there a unique social sharing platform, or is there something that enables you to get this onto social, you know, social media or, or what? Yeah, so in the app, uh, when you select an image or video, once it's downloaded, you're able to share that to any social media that you'd like. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole gamut. Um, and, and that is done directly from within the app. So I know a lot of the users of my channel, um, the Typhoon H has been one of the long, um, kind of awaited pieces. So I originally got a Typhoon H. Um, I, I had just a, I just ha I had an issue with one of them. I think it's a great platform. Now you guys have added the Intel RealSense to it. So why don't you tell me about RealSense, how it works, how do you still do like a follow me, and you know how does it do with um, object detection, collision avoidance, and you know maintaining that follow function. Yeah, so with the Intel RealSense on the Typhoon H, it opens up a bunch of doors. Um, what it's going to do is in a, in a normal flying mode, such as angle mode, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to stop itself if you're getting too close to an object, which will really help with depth perception. Um, but where Intel RealSense really shines is in follow me mode with the ST16 or the Wizard or the two combined. So, so what makes uh, the Typhoon H fundamentally different is that the 360 degree camera will watch you no matter where the drone is, but the drone, the nose of the aircraft will always be pointing forward, utilizing the Intel RealSense to intelligently navigate obstacles. So what that means is if, if you're following in front of yourself, looking back, the aircraft will be pointing forward, but the camera will be looking back, utilizing the the obstacle navigation. So that is that's a very very big feature of of the Intel RealSense, and basically what it's doing is it's it's looking for objects, but it's also creating maps. Right. It's creating 3D maps, and it's remembering those. So if you fly around the area and it maps maps the location, um, it will not have to map it again. It will know where it is in that space. What kind of a hit do you take on battery with RealSense on there? Do you take any hit compared to a Typhoon H without RealSense? You know, what is that hit? No, so in the Intel RealSense module doesn't use very much power. Um, you shouldn't see a noticeable difference. Are there any plans that you need can talk about with either cameras or anything coming up on the Typhoon H besides RealSense? So, yeah, so the, the, the cameras on the Typhoon H, they are an interchangeable platform. Um, so one thing we are showing uh, here at this show is the Seago ET. What the Seago ET is, it's, it's, a, it's a, both a thermal camera and an excellent low light camera. Um, so you can use it as one or the other, or you can, you can combine the two, um, giving you more detail in your infrared image. Then what, um, so with you it into the thermal, you know, into the thermal you know, area of this, what kind of uh, applications are you guys targeting that specific ET camera for? So, I mean, that, it's a long list. It goes sure. from search and rescue to monitoring um, solar cells to monitoring uh, uh, telecommunication uh, towers. Um, just a wide range of, of, of different commercial applications. So I think one thing that's neat is that you guys have you know, the integrated Android tablet into your controller. And then you've obviously, you've got your controller app. Are you developing any specialized apps you know, to, to take advantage of that ET camera? Is there anything like that that's on the way? Or, or do you plan on opening up an SDK, an SDK for the controller at all? So something we're always looking to do is uh, advance the capabilities of our products. Um, so at the moment, we are, we are looking into the, the benefits of opening up um, some sort of SDK. Uh, whether it be closed or open is, has been undeter undetermined. Um, but it is something that we're looking at and uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to integrate in the future. Thanks a lot, Trent. Awesome. I really appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks. you. All right, guys, that was Trent with Unique. He's the product manager for the Breeze 4K. So I wanted to bring you a quick video about Breeze, some updates on the Typhoon H, and what they're thinking of camera-wise. So hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, go down below. Let me know what you want to see while I'm here at Intertron. I'm going to be here for the next three days. So let me know what you guys want to see if there's anything specific. There's so much technology around here. I wanted to get with Unique. So uh, we're talking about the Typhoon H, the real sense, how it works, what do they have coming up with their ET camera, and what do they have with the Breeze 4K. Keep watching. I'll keep making videos. Subscribe below if you haven't so you get notifications over the next few days. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you guys soon.